COVID has, has brought the, to the future forward, according to some, the education sector has seen 10 years of innovation in a matter of months. So we're going to talk to Diego del Alcázar Benjumea, Executive Vice President at IE University, and James Lamont, the Director of Strategic Partnership at the, the, the Financial Times and the Chairman of Headspring, the FT's Executive Education Arm, which is a joint venture with IE Business School. So, we connect with the Prado Museum here in Madrid. Hello, Diego. It's uh, nice to see you. You look as if you're in a very interesting room in Madrid. Can you tell me um, a little about it? Hello, James. How are you? I'm, uh, to be honest, I mean, this is not a digital background, you know. So uh, today I have the immense luck to be standing in front of Las Meninas of uh, Diego Velázquez uh, at the Prado Museum in, in Madrid. This is one of the most famous and controversial artworks of all time, as it completely changes the rules of perspective. Um, I should say that I'm talking to you from the FT office uh, in London, not quite as dramatic and uh, cultured a background uh, as you have uh, in Madrid, uh, but it's, uh, it's great to see you and uh, thank you for that introduction. How do you think the pandemic is changing the traditional classroom model? Thank you very much, James. Um, indeed, COVID-19 has been a terrible virus that has inflicted a lot of pain in our society in general, and obviously to the education sector in particular. But it has also been an enormous source of, our, of transformation for our society. Many children and their parents, as well as many college students, have suffered the consequences of the lack of preparation of many schools or academic institutions. The interesting thing is that technology was there at their immediate disposal. As you mentioned, Tooms or Teams or Google and many other platforms already existed before the pandemic. And the school managers and faculty have been quick and flexible enough uh, to replicate the class in a digital mode. The problem is that replicating something from physical to online inevitably diminishes the experience. As Sanjay, ja as San sorry, as Sanjay Sarma uh, from Open Learning of MIT and Michael Horn, uh, professor at, ha at Harvard University and co-author of uh, Disrupting the Class, told me in a panel at Enlightened uh, two years ago, we should use technology not to substitute, but to exponentially improve the learning experience. Um, some parents, including myself, uh, are worried that children become reluctant to study if their academic experience is via a computer and via a computer screen and not in a classroom with their, their friends and their teacher and their, their normal environment. Um, how can technology get around this? I think uh, education has been a way to standardize knowledge and skills. Students have to pass common exams and learn through the same process. However, this neglects a basic fact. Humans are diverse and they learn in many different ways. This was highlighted by uh, Howard uh, Gardner and his theory of multiple intelligences. For example, some people have stronger emotional intelligence and thus will be better entrepreneurs and leaders. But traditional education is more difficult for them as it primes mostly analytical intelligence. The great contribution of technology applied to education is personalization, customization. Each student can maximize their potential for learning since technology may enhance their distinctive, their distinctive forms of intelligences and skills. At the same time, technology will also allow to better measure the impact and the results of education at an individual and societal level, thanks to learning analytics. Furthermore, 
as technology develops and becomes a commodity, educational platforms and apps will become cost efficient and sustainable, which is essential uh, for disrupting the educational traditional model. So how is IE University addressing these complex issues? And what's your strategy uh, at the university regarding the disruption of education? Our response to this, to the disruption of education is liquid learning. What is liquid learning? Well, liquid learning is a transformation and an interactive educational experience that transcends single methodologies and, um, sorry, and platforms blending together physical, digital, and natural environments so that the experience of our students is designed to obtain a unique world-class education. For example, one of our students is going to be able to attend a big data class remotely while he is working uh, in a social innovation project in Cambodia. Meanwhile, other students are attending the same class face-to-face -face in Madrid synchronously. But one of the students in the face-to-face -face class of Madrid is having difficulties with statistics. And the professor has chosen an app game so he can practice in any place at any time. Another student is currently in San Francisco, understanding better a technology he would like to use for his uh, venture uh, after his MBA. Later in the day, he will be socializing with his eye colleagues by playing for example, a Fortnite uh, private tournament that I has organized for, for uh, its students. This new way of understanding ed education is basically a new way of understanding the world we live in. Corporations are actually moving in this direction. Remote work is here to stay. Let me ask you something, James. How are you ambitioning? how corporations need to be addressing the disruption on education? Well, I'd like to say that we, we are proponents of liquid learning too, um, and learning very fast in, in this new, new era. So at Headspring, we are seeing a big shift towards virtual learning, uh, as are many others. Over the past few months, learning and development teams have had to respond to lots of business critical issues in a different way to how they were used to in the past. So lots of uh, executives are faced with a very new situation. Um, we're seeing a big surge in demand for development in new leadership skills. Uh, for instance, managing remote teams, uh, more agile decision-making processes, how to serve clients through uh, new and different channels even how to manage employee stress and well-being. These are all things relevant to me here at the FT, but I imagine these are being experienced in, in boardrooms and management teams right across the world. And uh, learning some of these skills uh, could make a big difference in a short time. And uh, I think Headspring is in a place to, to help uh, leadership teams in that way. The challenge for business is, is how to engage entire organizations, especially when they're now working remotely, and uh, getting them to work around common goals and filling capability gaps. Uh, learning organizations will be better at doing this than many others that aren't. So I think Headspring has a big opportunity with uh, this new era and uh, we're here to uh, serve these needs and enhance these skills. Um, some tech companies are designing courses to prepare their students for possible future employment with them. After six months of this kind of studying for tech skills, students can command salaries of uh, $80,000 in the US. With these kind of developments, what are the roles of universities going to be in the future? Uh, will they still be so re relevant for tech students? Higher education specifically is not here only to fulfill a career path. Obviously, higher education is aimed to maximize human potential, giving us the skills, capabilities, and attitudes to access the labor market successfully. 
But also, higher education aims to maximize human potential by giving us an interest-free space that nurtures respect of oneself and respect of others by understanding that people see things differently and that those differences enrich us. Universities allow, so allow us to escape from utilitarianism and give us perspective. They nurture our knowledge and attraction to our history and art, for example. In addition, education is not just an academic experience. Rather, education is mostly a social show showcase. University allow us to, allows us to socially interact, getting to know ourselves by meeting new friends that are different or similar to us, not just uh, learning from each other and with each other, but also creating emotional bonds for life. Uh, that's very reassuring um, to hear uh, all the advantages and enjoyments that students can have at, at universities. And as you say, it's a, a function of society and opening up the mind and not simply about careers. I think that's a very important point. Uh, Diego, thank you very much uh, for speaking to me. Um, enjoy your evening and uh, enjoy uh, looking at Las Meninas. Thank you very much, James. I'm, I hope that you can come to Spain uh, very soon and will come to the Prado Museum to enjoy uh, Las Meninas and this other amazing Velázquez pictures I'm surrounded with. Um, so, uh, so I hope to see you very, very soon. And uh, thank you for your time and for your very interesting uh, insights and questions. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, James. See you soon. Bye, Diego. Thank you, James, and thank you, Diego. I've heard of a liquid lunch, but liquid learning is a new one to me.